The Refactory Smart Tester came out just over a year ago to much hype with the potential to automate testing for nitrate, phosphate, calcium and magnesium. But at £600 per unit, it's not exactly an impulse buy. So today I'm going to give you my long term thoughts on it after 12 months of use so you can decide if it's worth the premium price tag. Now I've already made a full overview video that shows how it works, what it does, all those sorts of things. So this video will just focus on the problems I've had with it and how I found it in uh, and how I found it in terms of accuracy. And the usual disclaimer applies here, of course. Refactory gave me this unit for free, but they didn't ask me to make a long-term review. And in any event, as always, I am of course free to say whatever I want both good and bad. Now first up, I've only used this to test phosphate. When it was first released, it was advertised as being able to test all four parameters, nitrate, phosphate, calcium, and magnesium. But over a year on, and Refactory still haven't released the reagents for calcium or magnesium. And of course, it can only test one parameter at a time. So you need to manually swap between the reagents if you want to switch between testing for phosphate or magnesium. Now for me personally, I probably wouldn't have used it to test anything other than phosphate, but I think it's pretty poor form to advertise a product as being able to test four parameters when it can only test two. And while most people would probably forgive a short delay in releasing all of the reagents, we're over a year down the line now and there's still no release date for the calcium and nitrate reagents. And personally, I'd be pretty cheesed off if I'd bought one or more smart testers with the intention of testing those parameters. Must do better next time, Refactory. I also had a fault with my first unit that Refactory couldn't fix. The unit said there was a problem with the color reader and after a few attempts at fixing it, Refactory gave up and decided to exchange it, so they sent out a new unit to swap out for the faulty unit. Since then though, I've had no major problems and just a few minor issues. Every now and then, it can't complete a test, so it flashes up an error message, which means I don't get my test result. To fix that, all I do is tell it to try again straight away, or just leave it for a couple of days, and it seems to fix itself. Now, given that my first unit broke, the test failures did concern me at first, but to be fair, in the 11 months I've had the new unit, I've probably only seen that error maybe five to 10 times, so it's no biggie. Now that's really everything I have to tell you about reliability issues, so what about accuracy? Well, Refactory says you don't need to manually calibrate the smart tester regularly, and I actually haven't done so since I first got it. Now I'd usually expect an auto tester to drift quite significantly without regular calibration, so given I haven't calibrated it once in almost 12 months, how has it held up accuracy wise? Well, from the start, the smart tester gave results pretty close to my had a phosphate checker without ever quite agreeing 100%. And that's still the case almost a year down the line. It's usually within three or four points of the HANA. So if the HANA reads 0.10, the smart tester will read anywhere up to about 0.14. And when I checked it about a month or so before I made this video, the smart tester read 0.17, whereas the HANA read 0.22, which is a slightly larger five point difference. However, I've since managed to get that much more accurate, which I'll tell you about in a second. Now, because the reagent in the smart tester turns the sample water a blue color if your phosphate is high, I find the test beaker gets stained over time and will need cleaning or ideally replacing from time to time. As to how the beaker responds to cleaning though, well, I tried using bleach, isopropyl alcohol, and then citric acid, all without much success. It gets rid of the worst of it, but I couldn't quite get the beaker looking crystal clear, which is really what you want given the smart tester generates results by reading the color of the water sample through the glass beaker. So any staining on the beaker will have an impact on accuracy. And when I swapped out my old beaker for a new one a couple of weeks ago, the test result went from 0.14 with the old beaker to 0.20 with the new beaker, which compared very favorably to my HANA checker, which read at 0.21. So you can see a dirty beaker will make a fair old difference. And the tester went from its worst performance since I've had it of seven points out to just one point out after I changed the beaker. So it's well worth inspecting the beaker from time to time to see if it's dirty. And it probably wouldn't hurt for you to change it every six months or so if you can't clean it. Now to see how accurate my HANA checker was, I checked it against the HANA certified reference solution, which should read 0.40. And 0.40 is exactly what my HANA checker read. So I can be reasonably confident that my HANA checker is in fact accurate. And as I said, with a new beaker, the smart tester gave a reading of 0.20 compared to 0.21 on my HANA checker, which is pretty much spot on. And the smart tester has actually performed much better than I thought it would over time, given I haven't calibrated it for almost a full year, and the lack of maintenance is a big plus for me. Now that improvement was of course only after replacing the old beaker with a new one, and that new beaker cost me 33 pounds, 
which is a bit steep, so you'll really want to keep the old beaker clean, especially if you're using phosphate. Now, some of you might be expecting an exact result from the smart tester, particularly given the price. And while I only trust it to be accurate to maybe within three or four points, I personally think that performance is totally adequate. Hannah checkers are generally considered the gold standard in the hobby, but even they aren't completely accurate. And Hannah says they're only accurate to within two points. So if the Hannah checker reads 0.10, the true result could be anywhere between 0.08 and 0.12. And for me personally, all I expect from the little smart tester is a good idea of where my phosphate level is at, not an exact result. Now I don't use the smart tester to completely replace manual testing, and I still try to test manually every month or two, and instead I use a smart tester to map out my phosphate trends, which in turn I use to tell me when to change my phosphate removing media. And on that front, the smart tester has been absolutely fantastic. Historically, my tanks have always had high phosphate because I get lazy with testing and replacing my phosphate media. But the smart tester tests every day at 5 a.m., which means the result is ready when I wake up. And it sends me a push notification if the result is outside of my desired range. And it repeats that notification every day until I pull my finger out and change the phosphate media. Now, phosphate doesn't swing as quickly as something like alkalinity can in a saltwater aquarium, but it does rise and fall steadily over time. And it's easy to take your eye off the ball and end up with a highly undesirable level that will harm your coloration and growth in your corals. Now, the smart tester has stopped that happening in my tank, and because it maps out my phosphate every day, I now have a much better idea of what my phosphate does in my tank over time. While the accuracy is pretty good on the whole then, there are some other downsides that are worth mentioning. The minimum you can set it to test to is once per day, which some people won't like. The reagent does last for months at that level though, and a six-ish month supply will cost about 25 pounds in the UK. So I don't actually think that's a bad thing. And if you're spending 600 pounds on a phosphate tester, you're probably okay with spending 25 pounds every six months on reagents. But I mention it because it's something people often ask about with auto testers. And another issue is that changing the reagent is a bit of a faff. You have to sit by the smart tester for about half an hour while it runs through various cycles, which is a little bit tedious. And it's enough of a faff that it means that I think most people won't swap between reagents very often. And I think it's better to see the smart tester as a device that tests just one parameter, rather than thinking of it as a multi-tester that you'll swap between parameters every couple of weeks. I haven't had any major issues with the software for the smart tester, but the app has been a little buggy at times over the last year. Now that usually coincides with updates that refactory release, although I think they also struggled to cope uh, when they expanded outside of Europe and took on a whole load of customers in North America. For what it's worth, that seems to have settled down lately and I haven't had any real issues for a good few months now. But every now and then, one of my refactory devices will show in the app as being offline. The device will still work perfectly fine, you just can't make any adjustments to it until it reconnects to the server. And I find that turning it off and on again usually fixes that issue but it is still a little bit annoying and every now and then that doesn't work so you have to factory reset the device which really is annoying. And on that note I've had a connection error every day for the last week or so with my refactory smart feeder so I probably need to reset that at some point and really what I'm saying is that over a longer time period the refactory app probably gives me more jip than the app I use most apart from that, which is the Red Sea app. I also feel like the Refactory app has become a little bit disjointed over time. They've updated the overall look a few times, but they haven't applied that look throughout the app. So some pages have the design from when the app was first released a few years ago, other pages have the design from the first major update about a year or so ago, and some pages have the design from the most recent update a few months ago. That's not a major issue, it just makes the app a little bit less cohesive, and I mention it because the Refactory app is, in my opinion, the best and easiest to use app in the hobby, but the design updates and connection issues are starting to eat into that reputation. Now the build quality of the Smart Tester isn't fantastic, and that is the next area I would like to see Refactory work on on their devices generally, but to be fair, I found it as pretty much as good as it needs to be, nothing's broken off it, and it's noticeably less flimsy than the Refactory KH Keeper, which was a little bit loose. So I don't really have any complaints about the build quality. And on the plus side, I think it looks pretty slick and it's relatively compact. The one feature I haven't made use of is actions, which is refactory's control mechanism. If you have a refactoring dosing pump too, you can set them to dose phosphate remover like lanthanum chloride if your smart reader reads a test result that's too high, or if your phosphate gets too low, you could set your automatic doses to dose a liquid phosphate increaser 
or add more food via the smart feeder. But while accuracy is good enough for trends, it's not reliable enough to control any parameters in my opinion. And if you had a stained beaker, for example, it's entirely possible that the smart tester could be reading 0.05 when your phosphate is actually zero. So in my opinion, you're asking for trouble if you let it take the wheel. And to be fair, that applies to pretty much any similar device for that matter. And so to my overall conclusion then. And actually my thoughts haven't really changed that much since my first impressions review. It's accurate enough that I trust it to show my phosphate trends and having a daily map of my phosphate level has been really invaluable and has helped me improve my tank and has made my corals look more healthy and at least in theory, although I haven't tested it, grow more quickly. Now that alone has helped me get my phosphate under control for the first time in years and I would happily buy one of these with my own money. And apart from the fact that you still can't get calcium and nitrate reagents, the only thing I don't like is the price. It's £600 in the UK, which is a lot of money for just one parameter and doesn't represent great value for money given something like a ReefBot or Mastertronic will cost around £1,200 and will test for nitrate, phosphate, calcium alkalinity and magnesium as well as some others. And that's all of course without having to manually swap out the reagents like you do in a smart tester. Those multi-testers though are much bigger than I'd like them to be and I appreciate the compact size of the smart tester as well as the fact that it doesn't seem to need much maintenance. So ultimately then there are pros and cons of the various auto testers on the market and I would personally have no problem recommending the smart tester to someone who has 600 pounds burning a hole in their pocket and is too lazy to test phosphate regularly. But I do think it's overpriced for what you get, so if you're looking for the best bang for your buck, this probably is not for you, and you might be better off getting one of the multi-testers. And actually, weekly testing with a 12 pound salivert kit has been good enough for most people for many years now. Now videos like this often attract users of the device, so check out the comments to see what other people think. And if you've got a smart tester, share your experiences, both good and bad, with the community down below. In particular, let us know if you found it accurate, if it's drifted over time, what problems you've had with it, and if you found a reliable way to clean the beaker. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next time. And until then, happy reefing.